Welcome to BP Online. We're a church that meets in North Central Calgary with people from all over the world, from all different walks of life, and we're excited you're joining us today. We hope that as you watch online, you're encouraged and challenged in your faith, and most of all, that you encounter Jesus. If you're checking us out for the first time, welcome. You're in the right place at the right time. Whether you're watching us at home or on the go, we hope you'll be impacted by the service today. Thanks for joining us. We will be starting in just a few moments. Welcome to church, everybody. We're glad you're joining us this weekend. I invite you to stand and let's worship the Lord together. Here we go. us. 
I am excited about what God wants to speak into our spirits. We've been talking about um, prayer, and Pastor Mark is going to be continuing on into that series. And uh, I'm just praying that the anointing of God will be upon him, and that whatever Holy Spirit has for us to hear, we'll be willing to hear that and to put that into action within our own hearts and lives. Uh, before we um, hear what Pastor Mark has to say, we're going to take some time to continue on singing. And singing really is worship, giving God thanks for what God has done into our lives and what he is going to do in our lives in this service. And so let's have our the spirits open to what God has to say to us. So I'm going to pray. And then we're going to enter back into singing and expression of worship towards the Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you are an amazing God. We thank you, Lord, for the love that you pour into our lives. And so, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that as we enter into worship, that, Lord, that you speak into our lives, minister to us, strengthen our spirits. In the name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. going to call in the name that is everything to us. His name is Jehovah. Here we go. He shames every idol. He reigns with a rival. He goes by the name of Jehovah. Jehovah, he speaks into nothing, and darkness goes running. He goes by the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. Jehovah 
because you are so good. We thank you, Lord, for our guidance through this week. We thank you, Lord, for the battles that we fought, but that you fought them on our behalf. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for pouring health into our bodies. We thank you, Lord, for giving us work and careers that we can endeavor to, to continue to pursue. Father, we thank you for your goodness in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And so, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will give us a boldness to walk in your spirit. We pray, Father, O Lord, that we will be able to stand strong in the storms that we face. I pray in Jesus' name that you will continue to guide us and you will continue to lead us. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will pour victory into our spirits. You will pour victory into our lives. And for those, Father, who face challenges today, I pray in Jesus' name that you will hold their hand and you will walk with them. We thank you, Lord, that your word said that you are our shepherd and you will lead us through the dark times. You will lead us through the valleys. And so, Father, we put our trust and our confidence and our hope in you. And so, Father, I pray that as this service goes on, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will hover above around this room. We pray in Jesus' name that your spirit will rest upon us. I pray, Father, for Pastor Mark as he breaks forth thy word. We will hear and walk in obedience to you. In the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Isn't our God good? Amen. The scripture says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. He said, didn't take, he's, he's not saying take on the whole thing. He says, taste it. And so for you in this house, you've just come and you're visiting and you're wondering what's going on. He's simply saying to you, taste it. Taste and see. For those of you watching online, taste and see. And then he said, blessed is the man who finds refuge in him. So he says, lean upon the Lord. When you walk through those difficult times and those times that are hard and those times that are painful, he says for you to lean on him. So I pray that as Pastor Mark will bring forth the word and as we continue in our season of prayer, that you will learn to lean upon him. Amen. Let's give our Lord the praise that he deserves. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, welcome to BP Church. We are super happy that you are here this weekend. We believe God's got something for you, and so do we. It's called a little gift. How do you get that gift? Well, if you are new, in the seat back in front of you, there's a little connecting card, and you fill out as much information as you feel comfortable giving us, because uh, we want to get to know you. Take it to the Take Three booth out in the foyer, where we will put that little gift in your hand. We'll answer any of your questions, welcome you, um, yeah, and just tell you how grateful we are that you decided to join us this weekend. Also, if you've come prepared to give, we're trying to reach 1% of North uh, Calgary, and we're going to do it together, so our giving boxes are at the back, our giving stations in the foyer, and also online, bpchurch.ca slash give. So once again, on behalf of BP Church and staff, we want to welcome you to BP today. Well, just a couple of things we want you to be aware of. Just a reminder that next weekend we'll be hosting our baptism class from 5 to 6 p.m. on Saturday. And if you've said yes to Jesus, but you've never been water baptized to be able to just share your testimony about what God is doing, it might sound a little bit fearful or it might be a little bit, oh, I don't want to do it. But it will be a blessing for you, a blessing for people to hear your testimony about what God is doing. So that class, you can register for it at bpchurch.ca slash events. And also right after each service, we're hosting our open house in the gym where we have our leaders, we have our ministries, and we have a few snacks available uh, for you to just be able to connect if you want to grow and serve and just kind of put your hand to the plow here at BP Church for 2024. Uh, the only exception is that Pastor Mark will have a table for his missions uh, trip to Honduras, just kind of right behind me here in the foyer. He'll also have a bunch of those rocks, those rocks that we gave out last week. So if you um, were here or you wanted to grab one of those rocks or you missed it, or like, what is this thing about the rocks? Um, yeah, just to help us to remind what God has done for us. So I just want to remind you that you rock and people should take you for granted. Clever, so clever. So make sure you don't rush away. Make sure that you attend the open house and get involved today.
ABB Church at Fope here, and I just wanted to let you know that this Friday, Pastor Mark is actually going to be speaking at youth. He's going to be answering the questions of your students. I don't want them to miss out. It wouldn't be the same without them, so make sure they're there. We're actually going to be selling hot wings to celebrate this, so it's going to be fun. Second thing, the retreat registration for March is now open. Listen, we've been telling our students that we want them to be students of examples, not excuses. So to make an example, we'll encourage them. Please sign up for the retreat. It's going to be so fun. And also, tell them to think about a friend that they can invite. It's going to be a great time. So we'll see them this Friday. And also, we'll see them at the retreat. And the final thing we want you to be aware of is that our 50-plus ministry will be hosting... Um, a Bible study by Tony Evans called Living as an Overcomer. And it's going to be phenomenal, great teaching. If you're unsure what that course is about, well, here's a quick clip. God doesn't want lukewarm Christians. He wants you hot or cold. And that is, he does not want you lukewarm. In fact, he doesn't want it so bad that he says, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you're lukewarm, there's no commitment, there's no reality to your association with me. There's just religiosity. There's just spiritual verbosity, but there's not intimate connectivity. He says, you have left your first love. What Jesus is saying is, I don't want religion to replace relationship. He who overcomes, he who overcomes, but to the one who overcomes. So the call to overcome is a serious one. It is a word used by the Apostle John in the book of Revelation to the seven churches to talk about overcoming things that will keep us from full commitment to Christ. Jesus made it clear, in this world you're going to have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Well, church, those are all the announcements. Before we invite Pastor Mark to come on up, just a quick reminder that this Monday to Friday coming up this week, we're doing our 21 days of prayer and fasting, and we're going to be meeting for prayer at 6 a.m. here in the church. We're going to have coffee on, and we would love for you to be there. Now, I know there's a lot of obstacles from coming here at 6 a.m. For some of you, it's just too dark when I'm driving, and I don't feel comfortable. Well, install this on your vehicle. Some of you are like, oh man, I can't get out of bed that early. Well, go to Amazon and buy this alarm clock that shakes your entire bed. <laughs> and some of you might say, well, Brandon, I have kids. Well, you know what? Wake them up. We could set a great example for our kids. And then right after that, why don't you drive to McDonald's and have a great fun breakfast together. Create a lot of memories. Could I have one deluxe breakfast platter? And could I also have a number seven? When your kids get dropped off at school, they're going to just shout how amazing super parents you are. We are continuing our series, and today Pastor Mark is going to be talking about the Lord's Prayer. And so at this time, would you put your hands together and welcome Pastor Mark. church this weekend. We're glad you're here. Uh, after the service, as Pastor Brandon mentioned, out in the gym, we've got our ministry fair. Uh, so you can just check out the different ministries of the church and something that maybe you want to get involved in or something that you want more information about. We'd love you to check that out. And uh, again, if you're interested in the Honduras missions trip in June, I'm going to be at the table out there in the entryway uh, just after the service. So you can come talk to me then. Well, we're going to continue on in our series in prayer. Last week, we talked about the altars of our life, and that's what those rocks were about uh, that we had. Those, those rocks symbolize altars and times where we make uh, time for prayer with the Lord or also signify significant things that God has done in our lives as a memorial. And I encourage you to take one of them, put it in the place where you typically pray in your home, and, and just use it as a, as a point of remembering what God has done and what God's going to do and, and what you're asking God for. So if you didn't get one of them last weekend, maybe you were watching online or, or you weren't able to get here uh, and you didn't get to pick one up, we do have some out in the entryway. Well, what a difference a week makes, right? We went from minus 40 to minus four. That's pretty good. Thank you, Lord. You see, there's always something to be thankful for. It's still minus something, but 
we can be thankful it's not what it was. And we're moving forward towards the spring. The days are getting longer. There's more light. You're driving to work in the morning now. You're blinded by the sun coming up if you're heading in a certain direction. You know, when you come towards the church in the morning, that sun is right straight down the road just as you're getting to the church. And you're just like, can I turn? Can I turn? So anyway, it's, it's a little bit hazardous coming to work. So when you come here at 6 a.m., there's no problem. So we're helping you. We're helping you. 6 a.m. to 7. So I encourage you to be out for prayer this week, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Well, I'm going to jump into the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can because I do want to give you the opportunity to get out into the gym. Uh, and as we look at the Lord's Prayer throughout history in North America, probably different areas around the world, the Lord's Prayer has been used in a lot of different ways. It used to be used as kids went to school in the morning. The first thing they would do would be either they, they would... Uh, Sing the national anthem and say the Lord's Prayer. It was a foundational piece to society. Uh, eventually, the government took the Lord's Prayer out of the classroom and out of, out of what we taught our children as a foundation to their life. But I tell you, it is still a foundation to our life. It is still something that we can look into, and there's such richness in the Lord's Prayer for our lives. And so I want to give you an outline to the Lord's Prayer that we're actually going to follow this week, and something the Lord laid in my heart uh, for this year, at least for the six, first six months of the year, I'm going to follow this outline every day for prayer uh, to start my prayer. Now, it'll go off of this and go further into whatever the Lord wants me to pray about that day, but this is the foundational thing that I'm going to do, and I was telling Andrea about this the 1st of January and when we were doing devotions and we were talking about things the Lord was saying and I was sharing her with her and Kristen about, you know, what I wanted to do and she said, boy, can you write that up for me? And I said, well, I think I'm going to preach on it. So wait till I do that and then you can have it. So, but anyway, here we go. The Lord's Prayer is about effective prayer and, and Jesus' disciples come to him and say, can you tell us how to pray? Show us how we should pray. John's disciples pray this way and how, how should we pray? And Jesus talks to him and he says, you know, don't be like other people where you make prayer all about how you look or, or how other people look at you and how spiritual you come off as. He says, you know, when you pray, just get along with God. It, just connect with God. And he says, when you connect with God, then God's going to connect with you. And, and so that's what the Lord's Prayer is all about. In James chapter 5, James writes, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I truly believe that. Those that, that walk with God and allow God to speak into our lives and have connected with God, the prayers of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It moves things and it causes things to happen. In Matthew chapter six, we see the Lord's prayer and, and as Jesus explains to his disciples the different elements of it. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the weekend. Uh, so the different elements of the Lord's prayer and how I'm going to address it during my week. So the Lord's prayer is this then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, how will it be your name? Our Father in heaven, how will be your name? On Mondays, every Monday morning when I wake up, this is the area of the Lord's Prayer I'm focusing on for that day. Now, the rest of the Lord's Prayer, I'm still going to say it, but this is what I'm going to focus on. So on Monday, I'm going to acknowledge God's authority and power. Authority and power in my life, authority and power in, in my family, authority and power in my week. God, uh, how will it be your name? One thing about, you know, how will it be the name of the Lord is that respect that we need to have for God. That when we approach God, we're not just approaching a friend and saying, hey, how's it going? We're approaching almighty God. Yeah. And we need to have a respect and we need to have a holy fear. We need to have an awe of who God is. You know, when you, when you really admire somebody, when you really have great respect for somebody and you bear, you know, you, you, you get to know them, but you still, every time you come in their, their presence, you're like, man, it's so great to see you. And you have this feeling inside of you of, man, I'm glad this guy's my friend, right? Nobody has any friends like that. <laughs> but if you've got a friend like that, you got some of you, you're like, oh man, sometimes we get so used to prayer that God's just a high five. He's not that, this is the almighty God I'm talking to. He is the most important person in my life. He stands far above everyone else. 
You know, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it says, fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And acknowledge of the Holy One is under, the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When we know who God is and the fear of the Lord, this isn't a, I'm scared of you, God. This is a, I respect you, God. I, I'm in awe of you, God. We see reverence for God. When we approach God, we got to have this reverence in our heart. And so every Monday morning when I wake up, it's going to be, God, you're awesome. God, I am blessed to be able to approach you. You are almighty. And I stand in awe of you. The psalmist tells us this, that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and and he do, delivers them. Laurel, Laurel didn't even know that I was saying this, but taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Blessed is the one that says, you're the greatest and I'm coming behind you because I'm taking my refuge in you. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. And I love this as I start my week, it's gonna be God, you're number one, I'm coming behind you and, and I'm in awe of you and, and everything else I pray that week flows out of that and I will lack nothing. That's my prayer. And I pray that, that as we go through this year, we set and we establish the priorities in our life. Prayer for a whole, pray for a holy fear. We, we need that respect for God to rise in us and in the world. Not, not just that, well, yeah, I know you're a Christian, you, you believe in God, but a respect for how great God is. And as we start our week and as we step into our week, just establishing that in our lives. Now, first, it goes on in verse 10, it says, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So on Tuesday, I'm gonna focus on, God, let's advance the kingdom. God, God, your kingdom come in my life. Advance in me. Your purposes, your plans, your, your desires, advance in me and also advance in the world around me my family, my church, my, my community. God, let your kingdom come. Not the worldly kingdom, not, not the things that have been set up by man, not the things that have been set up by Satan. Not, don't let these things that Satan has established go forward, but change it so that your kingdom is moving forward in me. Starts here first. And then let your kingdom move forward around me. So on Tuesday is a surrender to God's authority and surrender to God's will. God, what do you have in store? And so when I, when I start on Monday, it's gonna be all about God, you're awesome. On Tuesday, it's gonna be all about God, your plan. Not my will, but yours be done. Your plan be unfolded in my life and see where the Lord takes you in that prayer. Be open to him saying, hey, there, there's something I have in store for you. There might be a dream that is birthed in that moment where you're saying, God, your kingdom come. And God says, okay, if you're serious about it, here it is. Here's my purpose. Here's the thing that you've been longing for that you've never seen because you haven't stopped long enough to let me show you. And let me encourage you on the Tuesday, you know, I'm gonna do the whole Lord's Prayer, but I'm gonna focus on this peace. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Psalm 25, it says, show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your path, guide me in the truth and teach me for you are God, my savior. And my hope is in you all day long. My hope is in you forever. My hope is settled in you. You see, I believe that when we pray your kingdom come and your will be done, we're saying, God, I just want to walk in obedience to you. God, what is it that you have in store? So take authority over those things that are hindering what God wants to do. There might be something in your heart and you see things, it may be in your children's lives that you're praying for them and saying, God, I pray that your kingdom will show up in their life. And you know, this is not of you. You ever seen that in a kid? You're like, God, that's not you. If you have kids, you saw it. That, that's not you. So if that's not you, that doesn't need to be there. 
So take authority over that thing. Your kingdom come in my marriage. If there's something going on in your marriage, you're like, that's not God. Your kingdom come, your will be done. You take authority over that thing. You allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart. Take authority over hindrances to the kingdom of God. Take authority over them, begin to break those things down. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul writes to the church and he says, for we live in a world, for, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Sometimes in order to see the kingdom of God move forward, you're going to have to tear something down that's in the way. It might be in the way in you. It might be in the way in me. And when I say, God, your kingdom come, if God says, yeah, but this is in the way, Mark, then at that moment I need to stop and say, okay, God, I need this tore down in my life. I need this removed in my life, no matter what it is, and take authority over that thing. He goes on in verse five, he says, we demolish uh, arguments in every position that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Now understand this, when it comes to kingdom authority and advancing the kingdom and, and demolishing strongholds, it is tied to how you perceive and think about things. Okay, it really is. And it's tied to what the voice is that you allow to continuously be speaking into your mind. He says, we we demolish arguments in every position that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, who you know God to be. That's why first day, we acknowledge who God is. Second day, we can take authority over things that don't line up with who I know God to be with who I know God to be in my life, who I know God to be in my family, who I know God to be. And every argument that comes against that, I take authority over it. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to who Christ is. And when we do that, we will see the kingdom move forward in our lives. And we'll see the kingdom move forward in our family. And we'll see the kingdom move forward in our city and in our church. But we have to take captive the lie that sets itself up against who God is in order to tear it down, to remove it out of the way for the kingdom to advance in our life. So on Tuesday, it's kingdom day. It's let's see your kingdom move forward. And Wednesday is give us today our daily bread. Now, this is probably one of those things that we do every day when we pray because we all have needs, right? We all have needs, we all have desires. And both are okay. God gives us the desires of our heart. God gives us desires in our heart. God has created all things for us to enjoy. Scripture tells us this. So it's okay to say, God, I have a desire. It's a healthy desire. I desire to be blessed in this area. And God, I desire to be blessed so that I can be a blessing. And and that's okay. It's It's actually okay. Jesus said, when you pray, pray, God, give us today what I need what I need for today and what you know I'm going to need as we go down the road. Give us today our daily bread. Call in provision. Call in your provision. You see, there's principles in scripture all about what God wants to do in our lives. He tells us that if we put the first fruits aside for him, that he's gonna bless everything else. That when we tithe, that we, we establish a covering over our finances, that God is going to give us wisdom, he's going to direct us, he's going to protect it, and he's going to keep the devourer from taking it away. That's a promise in scripture. You can claim that promise when you tithe. Right? You can claim that. Call it in. If something's happening in your finances and you're like, God, I give all the time. I tithe, I do this. Lord, your scripture says that you will protect it from the devourer. Then something's not lining up with the word of God. Okay? Something's not lining. And you have the authority to call in what is rightfully yours. So in prayer, when Jesus says, give us today our daily bread, you can say in this moment on Wednesday is provision day. It's God, I need your help. God, I've been following your your commands. I've been following your word. And, And Father, I'm bringing it back to you right now. In Jesus' name, I call in provision. 
In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in, in his glory in Christ Jesus, that he'll provide for all of our needs. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 16, it says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. If you're somebody that you've been sowing and you've been believing in and you've been generous, you have the right to call that in because God speaks it over you. And don't be ashamed to call it in. Just call it in. You have the authority in Jesus' name to say, God, I need this. And Lord, bring this in. And take authority over the things that are hindering that in your life. Pray for financial blessing for you and your family. Pray for financial blessing that you can do what it is that God asks you to do. Financial blessing for your church and for the kingdom of God to advance. For, the, for there to be funds where there needs to be funds for missions, for evangelism, for whatever it might be. Call it in. And he goes on, he says, now on Thursday, this is, this is what I'll be doing on Thursday. He says, and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Now, now Thursday is, is what I'm gonna call humble day. It's the day where if you don't have humility in your life, every Thursday, God's going to work on it. Every Thursday, God's going to work on humility in our lives so that we can advance in listening to his voice because it takes humility to forgive. And it takes humility to ask for forgiveness, right? Both ways. It all hinges on how humble I'm going to be uh, on Thursday, repentance and forgiveness, asking God to forgive us and asking others to forgive us and forgiving others. That all takes humility. Proverbs chapter 22, verse four says, humility is the fear of the Lord. Humility acknowledges, God, I need you. God, uh, I need you in my life. <coughs> Excuse me, I need your forgiveness. I I need your restoration. I need your strength. And God, I need you to help me to forgive that person or this circumstance or let that thing go so that I truly forgive. You see, I, I believe when we do repent, we build humility. Every time, every time, and you'll see it this week, Every time you do something that somebody's like, man, I, I, I was offended by that or, or I can't believe you said that or if you give your, your wife or your husband a quick response and they look at you like, what's that? What's it take in your life? Even though you're frustrated, even though you're mad, even you can justify your response. What's it take for you to say, I'm sorry? Humility. Realizing, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I shouldn't have done it. No matter what my day's been like, I shouldn't have done that. To your children, no matter how annoying they are, sorry, I shouldn't have said it that way. I should have said it, just not that way. But it, it takes humility, right? And, and if you've never done that with your own children, you really need to start practicing it. There's been times when I've had to apologize to my kids and say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said it that harsh. I'm sorry I did it that way. And, and not excuse my tone by their actions. Because if you don't show them humility, they're not going to learn it. They're going to learn it from mom and dad first. Or it's going to be hard lessons later on in life. So mom and dad, we, we've got to get there. And, and, and when it comes to repentance, boy, we got to, you know, I know other people, some people, anyway, there's lots of theology around repentance, but I know everything's been paid for. Jesus died on the cross for everything. And when I step into relationship with God, he's already forgiven me for my past. He's forgiven me for my future. He's there. But you know what? I know he's an almighty God. And it doesn't matter. I'd forgive my kids for anything they've done before they even ask, but I'm going to ask every time I feel convicted that I've done something wrong. And I believe we gotta keep that short account with God where we're just like, God, I don't want there to be anything between us because you're almighty God and I'm not. 
We need to live a life of humility and live a life of repentance and forgiveness. And on Friday is lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, this is an interesting part of prayer because there's different things in scripture that don't line up with God doesn't tempt people. Scripture tells us in James chapter one, Verse 13, it says, God cannot be tempted, nor does he himself tempt anyone, but each of us is drawn away by our own desires and enticed. Okay, so that, that's how temptation grows in our life, that we're drawn away by our own desires, and we create those desires by what we expose ourselves to. And, and But Jesus says, <clears throat> lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from the evil one. Now, if you look at Jesus, when Jesus was baptized, he, he comes up out of the Jordan and, and he's led by the spirit into the wilderness and he's tempted. You getting what I'm saying here? So there's a leading of the spirit that's leading him towards where temptation is going to be or a trial is going to take place. You see, God will test us but he won't tempt us, okay? So G Jesus was tempted, but he was tested more than he was tempted. God sent him there to show humanity that we can step over temptation. See, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led into the wilderness and was tested and tempted at the same time. You will face testing in your life. In those moments, it's God saying, I'm going to refine something in you. And I'm going to show the world something through you. You will face temptation in our lives. And that temptation is going to be stronger <clears throat> when we expose ourselves to things that shouldn't be in our lives. And when we create desire that goes in a certain direction. Now, this we can take back to, to uh, when we ask for the Lord to provide our daily bread or provide for us. Uh, if at that time greed is growing in our life, then temptation will move us in the direction towards greed in our life, if that's a desire. But if it's a true desire in prayer of God, I just want to be a blessing. I want my family to be blessed. And, and God, we just need you, your provision in our life. Then, then we're not moving into temptation and we're not allowing sin to grow in our life. Now, when, when Jesus is is tested in the wilderness he steps forward in the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and he overcomes by the word of God because he understands and knows the power of the word of God that is in him the desire in him was to show the world who God is so he had the word of God in him so that he could face the time of testing and if we have the word of God in us we can face the time of testing and overcome all temptation. I said a lot in a few seconds, but hopefully that landed. That the word of God helps us in testing and helps us in temptation because we've exposed ourselves to what our life needs, not what our life doesn't need. So that's on Friday. So Proverbs chapter 22 tells us, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. So when Jesus says, pray this way, lead us not into temptation. In other words, pray, God, show me temptation when it's coming. Reveal it to me before it's here so that I can move away from it, so that I can hide myself from it. But the simple pass on and are punished. In other words, we just keep going into areas and we don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, don't go in that direction. And we keep going in that direction. And when we do go in that direction, instead of being able to step over temptation or over a test, it trips us up. But a prudent person foresees evil and hides himself. Pray that God will reveal evil around you. Pray that God will show you when something is coming so you can actually avoid it in your life. In James chapter four, verse seven, it says, therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God, say, God, what is it that you want from me? What is it that you're speaking to me? God, when you're convicted, convict me if I'm heading in a direction I shouldn't go. 
and the devil will flee from us. And there's another thing I believe we can do, and as we see in Scripture, is that when it comes to temptation and it comes to Satan throwing things at us all the time, of course, there's the armor of God and the shield of faith that protects us from the fiery darts of the enemy and, and, and that in our lives. But there's something that we can pray, I believe, is that God will protect us on all sides. There's a great story. Now, I know the story focuses on all the things that Job loses and all the things that Job goes through and that Job Job doesn't deny God through the whole story, but the story starts like this. Does Job fear God for nothing, Satan replies? Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? I love that. You know, Satan comes to God and, and God says, well, what are you doing here? Where are you coming from? And he says, I've been all over the world and there's nobody that I haven't been able to trip up. There's nobody that I haven't been able to tempt and then fall into my temptation. And God says, well, have you, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan says, well, yeah, I can't touch him because you're protecting him all around. All of his stuff, all of that he has, all of his life. You, you got a hedge all the way around him. I can't get in there. So that means God can put a hedge around everything. Pray it. Call it in. Just say, God, I want the hedge of Job. I want a hedge like Job had, that nothing can get in my family, that nothing can touch my stuff, that nothing can hit me. It, it just cannot get in. And start praying that and start claiming that. I, it's, gonna be my, <clears throat> it's gonna be my Friday. A hedge of protection, Lord. A hedge of protection around me that nothing can get in. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. For yours is the kingdom. I, I love how Matthew finishes it this way with, with his acknowledgement again about God and his kingdom and, and my life is lined up with his kingdom and under his kingdom. And so for the weekend, uh, on Saturday and Sunday, this is gonna be my prayer. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I'm gonna acknowledge and submit to the activity of God in my life. Acknowledge and submit to what he is doing and give him the praise that he deserves. So that when we come together on the weekend, I'm just gonna be praising and thanking him for all the things that he's done all week long. And in my life and in my devotions, I'm not going to just go through my week and get to the weekend and go, oh, I made it again. Of course, my work week starts on Saturday, so it goes the other way. But I'm not just going to get there and go, oh, I made it. I'm going to get there and go, God, you're awesome. God, you're awesome. I want to celebrate what you've done and I want to go forward in what you're doing and my life is going to be under your kingdom. It's not going to separate from you for yours is the kingdom. For yours is the power that has sustained me all week. For yours is the glory. Anything good that's been seen in my life, it's because of you this week. And I, I, this is my prayer for the next I'm going to commit to at least doing it for six months. It might end up turning into the rest of my life. But it's, it's a formula that I'm going to use. There's nothing special about it other than Holy Spirit spoke into my heart and said, do this. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And, and so I, I just want to give it to you as you go into this year. Now this week, as we come here at 6 a.m., we're going to follow this all week long. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then, of course, on the weekend, next weekend, we'll be worshiping and praising together again. So this is the, the process that we're going to follow uh, this week as we go through the week. See, I believe prayer moves heaven. It shakes the earth. We talked about that last week. And it changes us. And it's meant to change us. When we connect with God and he's speaking to us, there is no way we can't change. Because he's a holy God. He's an awesome God. And when we look at who he is, there is no way that I won't change because I need to change because he's God and I'm not. And so as we go through this week and, and we move towards next weekend, next weekend, I believe, is just going to be one of those weekends where, where God just does just some great things. 
I, I really believe that. Uh, Carlos has a great anointing, a real prophetic anointing, and, and I'm just really looking forward to what the Lord is going to use him and, and you work through him, and, and we're going to worship together on Saturday, Sunday morning, and then Sunday night, Carlos is going to be back speaking again. We're going to take some time at the end just to ministry with people and encourage people, and, and Mike Larson, Mike, Mike Larson's a worship leader down at First Assembly on the south side. Mike and I have been friends for about 25 years. And, and I called Mike last week, a couple of weeks ago, and, and just said, hey, would it be possible for you to bring a team and allow our worship team just to relax and enjoy the, the, the Sunday evening service? He said, well, let me see if we can do that. So on, on Monday, he confirmed with me, yes, uh, I can bring a team and, and we'll be here. So Mike Larson, the Tehillah worship team will be here on Sunday evening uh, to lead us in worship. Uh, and it's just going to be a fun night. So I encourage you this week, as we press in in prayer, and as we move to the weekend, just be expecting what God is going to do. That God is going to show up in supernatural ways in your prayer time. And, and we're going to try to stream it every, every morning. We'll stream from 6 to 7. If you can't make it and you just want to have it on at home, if you've got kids or whatever, we understand there's all kinds of limitations, but I really want you in the room. If you can get here and get in the room, don't be lazy. Right? Well, that's really all it is. If there's no other reason, then it's just you're being lazy. And if you want God to do something supernatural in your life, don't be lazy. <laughs> Norrell has to be here, so he has to say amen. <laughs> He doesn't want to be here by himself with me. <clears throat> Let me encourage you. Hey, let's push this week and see what God will do. And just see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, Father, we just thank you. God, that we can connect with you through prayer. What a supernatural thing just to focus our attention in your direction. And we get to step into your presence. God, we thank you that you've made it possible through Jesus. We thank you that, that you sent Jesus to this earth to die on the cross so that he could pay the penalty for sin in my life, that, that I could be set free from it. And Lord, you'd place your spirit in me. God, we thank you that we can approach your presence, your throne room with boldness because Jesus has given us access and Lord if there's anyone this weekend either in this room or watching online that God they, they feel there's something between them and you God maybe they've never invited you into their life never accepted what Jesus has done or maybe they did at one time but they've, they've pushed you aside and allowed other things to overwhelm their life and feel separate from you right now God, whatever the case, we know that your arms are always open wide and you're always inviting us back into relationship. And just with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you're here or maybe watching us online this weekend and you don't have that relationship with God that I'm talking about where you can connect with him and he's speaking back into your life and encouraging you and moving you forward and providing and all the things that his relationship with us offers us. If you're here and, and, and you'd say, you know, I need that. Maybe you're seeking spiritual things. You've never accepted Jesus in your life. Or, or maybe this is a return to what you know you need. Whatever the case might be, I just want to lead you in a simple prayer that acknowledges your need and your acceptance and invites Jesus in. So if that's you this weekend and I can pray with you and just lead you in a prayer that would invite Jesus into your life, I'd love to know who would want to pray it with me before I do my right and your left. I'm going to look across the room. If you say, yeah, Pastor, I, I need to get right with God. I need Jesus in my life. All I want you to do is look at me. My right and your left. Thank you. And in the middle, if that's you this weekend, and over to my left and your right, if that's you. Yeah. And online, if that's you, there's going to be a little bubble that comes up. Just click on that. And, and, and just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I believe 
that you died on the cross to pay the penalty for my sin. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to remove it from my life. I ask you to fill me with your spirit. Empower me to live the life you've created me for and let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing this song this evening as we get ready to close. Never make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. I will make, I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. special announcement we need to make this weekend. We did send a notice out earlier this week about this, and uh, uh, it's a sad announcement, but an exciting announcement at the same time for Mark and Sarah. Uh, Mark has decided that uh, his time here at BP Church is, is coming to an end uh, as our worship pastor and uh, is going to be stepping into something new, whatever God has in store for him and his family. And, and He's going to be here the next three, two weekends, so this weekend, next weekend, and then the third, fourth weekend, or is it fourth, fifth? Third, fourth? Third, fourth weekend will be their last weekend with us, and uh, so we want to honor them that weekend and thank them, but over these next few weeks, if you have an opportunity to talk to them and thank them and, and bless them for all that they've been to us, we encourage you to do that. I'm going to ask Sarah to come and, and Evan and Mark. I want to pray for them as they start making decisions as to what their next looks like. We want to be able to just walk with them and encourage them and, and uh, allow the Lord to move them into whatever it is that the next thing is. And so why don't you reach your hand forward and uh, let's pray with them. Father, we just thank you for Mark and for Sarah. God, I thank you for all that they've been to this church. God, that, that they've helped us in so many areas and over the growth over these last uh, number of years, Lord, that you've used Mark so well in so many areas, Lord, to help us to advance different things in different departments in our church. And so, God, we just thank you for them. We pray blessing on them as they go forward. Pray for wisdom, Father, of what they have in, you have in store for their lives. That, God, that you will let your kingdom come and your will be done in their lives, Lord, as they seek you out for their next in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. And same thing for Evan, too. Evan, yes. <clears throat> well, our ministry team is going to be here at the front. If we can pray with you about anything, we'd love to do that. We'd also love you to check out the ministries that are out in the gym and uh, see if there's something there the Lord might lay on your heart to be involved in. And if you're interested in going to Honduras with me in the summer, I'm going to be out at the mission table. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more information about our ministry, visit bpchurch.ca. Have a great week and live the ultimate life.